Have I been pwned? It's a question that maybe everyone asks themselves. Maybe even you. You think, hey, has my password or personal information ever been exposed in a data breach? Have hackers got a hold of my information? And is my security posture, is my own threat model and risk at risk? In this video, we're gonna chat about it. In case you've never seen it before, there is an online resource literally called haveibeenpwned.com where you can determine if your data, if your information is out there somewhere in a public data breach. This is a super cool, completely free and readily accessible to you service to help you determine have I been pwned. But you might be thinking, hey, look, I'm not gonna type in my password in some online input box. That just sounds like a bad idea. And you're right, you shouldn't do that. Don't trust anything that is asking for your password that isn't a service or application you're trying to log into. But this takes a little bit of a different approach because on haveibeenpwned.com, you enter your email or phone number to see if it is included in a data breach. And then you might know, are there any other things that have been included in that? Like specific passwords or accounts or any websites or anything that might be tracked by all of the data, like millions of pieces of information that haveibeenpwned.com tracks. So let me try it, here we go. I'm gonna type in my email address and oh no, it's been pwned. My email address just based off of my email alone has been owned in 13 data breaches and in one paste. A couple of the breaches, an incident where data has been unintentionally exposed to the public. There are a couple wild ones where, hey, there were a ton of data breaches put out onto the internet. A big one over with Adobe, of course, hey, I have used Adobe before. In October 2013, 153 million Adobe accounts were breached containing internal ID, username, email, encrypted password, so they got the hash, and a password hint in plain text. However, the cryptography for the password was poorly done, and most of those hashes were quickly cracked. Hey, they were able to be determined and brought back to plain text. So the hackers found out my password. What else we got in here? We got Bonobos. That's where I ended up shopping for pants for my first job, going into the office, you know, had to look nice. Zooming in just a little bit. Holy crap. That one had email addresses, IP addresses, partial credit card data, phone numbers, physical addresses, and past purchases. Chegg, of course. Hey, that's how I was looking to see how I could get my homework done. Gamers Planet. Uh, I don't really know what I would have been doing on that one. But oh, a V-Bulletin? Yeah, whatever. 2015? Probably around that time. Gravatar? That's a big one. I was absolutely using Gravatar for some Slack icons and profile pictures. My Fitness Pal? Yep. Hey, that's when I try to get healthy. Nitro PDF, Ticketfly, Tumblr, and Twitter. 200 million in Twitter in early 2023. This year, as I'm recording, Recording, over 200 million records were scraped from Twitter on a public hacking form. That was just published outright. The data was obtained sometime in 2021 by a threat actor adversary abusing an API that enabled email addresses to be resolved to different Twitter profiles. Last one is Zanga. Oh, words with friends. <laughs> it got me. Oh, and here's another wild and crazy part. Here are some of the pastes that I've been found in. A paste is information that's been published to a publicly facing website designed to share content and is often an early indicator of a data breach. And they literally just link and list all of the pastes that you've been including. Hey, this has a, what, a million and a half emails. They don't know when this was actually uploaded, but I could just go to this link. Oh, no, okay, that one's dead. This site can't be reached. Looks like that took too long to respond. It is at like, what, a port 8,000 or whatever, uh, 8080, so that's kind of weird. Oh, but hey, what's to stop me from just copying and pasting this URL and going to go check it out in the Wayback Machine? Okay, so here, yeah, what if I go to the Internet Archive and I just slap in this URL? Can I go see if it was archived or captured at any point in time? It it was. Look like, hey, yeah, 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 right around uh, 2021 and 2022, there were a couple snapshots. Uh, so let's go see... Where do they have this? Oh, look, February 14th, right on Valentine's Day. A little bit weird. Try to go view this page, take a look. Whoa. Okay, so these are all of the pasted and leaked emails alongside their password. I'm assuming that colon is kind of the delineator uh, to separate these, the delimiter between the fields here. And look at how many there are. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to scroll, but it's like lagging my web browser. Computer's choking on this. It's going to have a heart attack. So hey, just for funsies, I uh, downloaded and copied all of those uh, passwords and emails to kind of just show it to you because it's insane. Uh, and look, I don't have too much shame putting this and in, in showing this on a YouTube video because it's already it's already out there. It's probably public. It's literally linked from the web page. Scrolling down, though, I don't know if you can see my scroll bar way on the side. Like, uh, it goes on forever. I feel like it got truncated. Yeah, it literally gets cut off because there's what? Seven, 768,428 entries in that. And that's plenty. That's plenty. 
Look at this poor Julian. JulianLifeAtLive.com. Password is the password. Come on. Anyway, I didn't want to go too far down the rabbit hole there. I did want to show you some of that stuff, but I want to show you more of the HaveIBeenPwned.com resource because you can check out some of the recently added breaches. Hey, some stuff that came in literally February this year, this month. Uh, hey, some telecom provider was hacked by Anonymous, so to speak. Uh, and there's an article. They literally link it to you as to what's going on and where. 128 gigs of documents on surveillance shenanigans. Oh, that's a little bit of a spicy conversation. I don't know if I should put that in a YouTube video. I'm out of here. They got Real Dudes Incorporated, We Accounts. Okay, these are just the recently added breaches. This is just stuff, hey, that's keeping it current. Some of the largest breaches over on the left-hand side, you got exploit.in in there. Of course, Facebook. What is that, 500 million? Absolutely insane. And by the way, this whole thing is put together by Troy Hunt. So hey, credit where credit is due. Troy's an incredible fella, kind of digging what he's up to. Uh, and I think this is one super duper cool resource. If you want to read more about it on the About Me section of the webpage, you certainly could. Hey, there's plenty of stuff to kind of click through on there. But there are other sweet things where you can actually get yourself notified. Hey, just subscribe when anything actually hits your email address. That way you at least get a notification. Yo, there's some data data breach going on. If you wanted to search for data breaches on a given domain, you can do that. But one super important thing here, if you cannot verify that you control the domain, you'll not be able to search for breached email addresses on it. You have to actually own the domain. So I can't just search, hey, give me all of the hacked Netflix accounts. Uh, because if I actually go ahead and subscribe, enter an email here, I'll do a little a at a.com. Yeah, I'm not a robot. Duh, obviously. Uh, you'd need to go ahead and verify that either by email or meta tag on the website or by file uploads or anything else like a text record. You have to own the domain. There is, of course, a record of who has been pwned, some of the other crazy big ones that are available on their RSS feed, and an API. I do want to get into the API because some of that is wild, but take a look through here as to some of the breached and data leaks uh, and all those things that could have data and information compromised, potentially including your info, your email, your password. Now, hear me out. Hear me out real quick. I did say that you shouldn't type your password into an input box on a website that you just happen to find online with, I'm going to add a little little asterisk footnote and caveat here because you could do that on have I been pwned.com in the password section you actually have a search to go through pwned passwords or owned uh, compromised passwords hundreds of millions of real world passwords previously exposed in data breaches their exposure makes them unsuitable for ongoing use as they're at a much greater risk of being used to take over other accounts but hear me out if you wanted to use this if you're trusting if you want to go through the source code you can see how it all works we can probably pry the thing open and take a look at client side code because what they end up using here is this background aspect and the privacy of using this and searching for passwords here i believe what they might end up doing is actually taking the password that you enter using JavaScript on the client side to hash it. After they've hashed the password on the client side locally, then they could send it to the server. And actually there is the API behind this that will look through the database, but only against hashes using a very, very slick, interesting method called like K anonymity. And we can dive into that in a little bit if you want to get super nerdy, but it helps you keep the password that you might be searching for safe. I just typed in the word like example here, and that has been seen 6,654 times before. What if I literally type in the word password? How stupid is that? Yeah, 9,636 G's. Okay. If you do scroll down on this page, though, they give you some really interesting stuff. They give you a pwned password list. Uh, as of May 2022, Troy Hunt has been able to kind of put that together and you could just straight up download it. Well, I don't know, maybe bigger than RockU or any of those other password dictionary files that we might be using. Check these out, like 17 gigs. I think I downloaded one of these. I'm not quite sure which one I did, um, but I think I hit uh, shot one. I can try and show you that. So here it is. I got a little uh, file explorer open. I'm going to go ahead and use 7-zip to extract this. We can extract these files. Uh, I don't know how long this is going to take because my goodness, it uh, is like what, 17 gigs? Um, yeah, we'll just let this thing go. <laughs> It is all plain text, though, so I guess the compression is going to be really, really nice. So that has extracted, uh, but bear in mind, this is likely just going to be hashes. Hey, let's try and open this thing up here. Let's see if Sublime Text will be able to open it, or it'll just choke on it. You can see that progress bar just doing its best. <laughs> but before we go any further, please let me include a quick shout-out and some love to today's sponsor. I don't know any of my passwords. I don't know what they are. They're all crazy long and complex. They even have emojis in them. And that's because I use a password manager. And I'm a huge advocate for using a password manager to generate completely unique and secure passwords for each service or account you use. And personally, I use Passbolt. It's become my daily driver and main password manager. 
Passbolt is a free and open source password manager that allows both individuals and team members to store and share passwords securely. I absolutely love how easy Passbolt is to use and how you can make it solely your own. You control your data. You can host your own Passbolt management instance completely for free and run it on your own Linux servers or Raspberry Pi or deploy it straight to the cloud with hosting providers like AWS or DigitalOcean. Or just let Passbolt handle it all for you. You can easily create and store passwords and autofill wherever you need to with the Passbolt browser extension and their mobile app that even has biometrics for quick and easy authentication. On top of that, Passbolt is completely open source. You can look through the code on GitHub, extend it with the REST API, integrate with it on the command line, and even contribute and hack on the code. Best of all, they are a thousand percent passionate about hearing from the community. They want the feedback to make your password manager the best it can be. Now including two-factor authentication on free accounts and even transitioning more of the subscription tier features into their community edition. I love it. You can get started with Passbolt for free with my link below in the video description. Their cloud instance is incredibly easy to spin up and they take extra precautions to keep everything secure, even with a private key, backup codes, and a unique color and pin to protect you against phishing attacks. It is password security done the right way with Passbolt. Huge thanks to Passbolt for sponsoring this video. Anyway, I don't want to dwell on that if it's going to take a long time, but I do want to show you the API because this is the coolest thing in the world. You can dig through it if you wanted to. Hey, grabbing the API version, user agent, blah, blah, blah. They tell you all you could do this with an API key. If you want to grab one, you certainly can. There's one that you could actually work with that you don't need to get a whole lot of that set up. You could just straight up pull and query and request the web page. But I'm sorry, uh, without like steamrolling and speed running through that, you can do some pretty neat stuff like getting breaches for an account, breach sites in the system, or a single site that you know, hey, had a data breach. You could even look through some of those pastes. That might be kind of fun to explore and dig through. But pwned passwords, I did want to take a look at because pwned passwords are exactly that pwned passwords page that we were just on a moment ago. But you can go and actually access this really, really easily by using some smart, stealthy hashing techniques. And that's that K anonymity model that I was just mentioning briefly is that, hey, if you give the API the first five characters of either a SHA-1 or an NTLM hash, you can pass it to the API just like this, super duper easy. You don't even need an authorization key or any API shenanigans. You just literally get the link. And here's what it does. When a password hash with those same first five characters that you just supplied, then the API will respond with an HTTP 200, like success, here's all your stuff, but include the suffix, like the latter half of the hash that includes the whole rest, uh, given what you might have searched for. And it shows how many times that has appeared in the entire data set everywhere in every single leak. So here's an example. Hey, let's like, let's grab this URL. Uh, let me go to it in my web browser here. I'll open up a new tab. You can check it out. I'll zoom in here and look, it says, hey, the hash prefix was on a valid format because I didn't even supply one. What if I just hit like, I don't know, F A 271. Yeah, OK, I was playing with this before and 271 seemed to work fine just for me. So take a look. All of these hashes. Now, bear in mind, if I open this like in Sublime Text, is Sublime Text even going to play nice for me? I think I had it choke earlier here. Uh, this string of text is only 35 characters. It is uh, not 40 characters as a normal SHA-1 hash is. Because remember, I need to add in this FA-271 at the very, very beginning of this. That works great. Now, I want to go find, I want to scroll through here. I want to look at the ones that had like the highest number, the highest count as to how many times they appeared in the data breach. Cause I want to see, Hmm, what are the weak passwords that I might be able to even just go ahead and track down and find on my own? Or can I crack that SHA-1 hash, even if it's like publicly known and accessible? Cause don't forget what we're looking at here is only the SHA-1 hash. It is the hash of the plain text password. It could have been any sort of format to begin with. Could have been like bcrypt, could have been whatever, but because now we see it in this hash representation and we're only searching by the first five characters. We have a certain amount of privacy because the server is only going to know a portion of your hash and even the responding client only knows a portion without given the first start. You know what I mean? So anyway, let me scroll down here because I want to see something. We had like 90 as the highest number so far. Are there any others that are just massive? Can I search for like a, well, I guess searching for it's kind of crappy because... 
Let me just keep scrolling. Do I see a big number? What was that one? 134? Yeah, 134. That's an option. What else do we got? Oh, whoa. Okay, I see a 205 right here. I'm going to try this fella. All right, so yeah, 205 looks to be our candidate. Uh, and I want to see, can I go ahead and grab this uh, suffix of the SHA-1 hash? And let's see if I can just go to a simple like crackstation.net and try and crack this hash. So I'll go ahead and full screen this. I'll zoom in here, slap that in. And remember, I need the first five characters that I was suggesting that with. FA-271. And this is the uh, hash of the password. It is not the password itself. It is just a mathematical computation. Oh, goodness. I'm not a robot. I'm not a robot. Crosswalks. Okay, cool. <laughs> and it found it. It found it. Okay, so the original plain text of this hash was WSL WSL. Uh, okay. <laughs> kind of a dumb, stupid password. I'm curious, though, is it actually present in RockU? Pulling it up here. If you aren't familiar, rockyou.txt is a massive uh, dictionary file or big long list of potential passwords. Now, not all of this is uh, safe for work. <laughs> there is some profane language uh, and potentially vulgarity in here. So whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll run past that. Uh, but I'm curious, can I control F for WSL WSL? Was this plain text password found in rockyou.txt? And yes, it is online. 2,704,914. So look, whoever was using that password and it was seen across 205 occurrences in all these leaks, probably not a good one to use. And my uh, other sublime text window on all of the pwned passwords, I'm assuming this again, this is going to be all hashes, uh, but it is just still having a time with sublime text trying to read it. <laughs> So look, that is the haveibeenpwned.com website. Maybe going a little bit further, doing some fun stuff with it. But seriously, I think it's got a really cool resource. And if I may, in the last couple of moments here, hey, play with this thing. Try your own email or your phone number or your password. If you want to go take a look and search and see what you might have already popped up in, in a previous data breach. I don't know, check in with your friends, check in with your family. It's one thing that you should do and you should practice proper password security and good hygiene. So you know what that means, like have a password policy, like have long complex passwords, have randomly generated passwords. Don't use the same password for every single service. Hey, top of the line suggestion here, use a password manager. <laughs> pretty, pretty please. That's why I wanted to pair this video with uh, the lovely sponsor for this video. And I hope with that, you learned something new and got a new resource, got some new service to be able to kick around with and just get passwords out of your mind. Don't even think about them. Don't even know what your passwords are. Let a password manager do the work for you. But for those friends that still need to be educated, for mom, grandma, for family, for folks that just aren't in the security scene yet, hey, let them see what haveibeenpwned.com is and let me sh let you show them what cool stuff you might be able to glisten and lean and learn from it. With that, I'm done rambling. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.